Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Buddhism. Buddhism is an Indian religion and dharma that encompasses a variety of traditions, beliefs, and spiritual practices largely based on teachings attributed to the Buddha. Buddhism originated in ancient India sometime between the 6th and 4th centuries BCE, from where it spread through much of Asia, where after it declined in India during the Middle Ages. Two major extant branches of Buddhism are generally recognized by scholars, Theravada and Mahayana. Buddhism is the world's fourth largest religion, with over 500 million followers or 7% of the global population, known as Buddhists. Buddhist schools vary on the exact nature of the path to liberation, the importance and canonicity of various teachings and scriptures, and especially their respective practices. Practices of Buddhism include taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, study of scriptures, observance of moral precepts, renunciation of craving and attachment, the practice of meditation, the cultivation of wisdom, loving-kindness and compassion, the Mahayana practice of bodhicitta and the Vajrayana practices of generation, stage, and completion stage. In Theravada the ultimate goal is the cessation of the kleshas and the attainment of the sublime state of nirvana, achieved by practicing the Noble Eightfold Path, thus escaping what is seen as a cycle of suffering and rebirth. Theravada has a widespread following in Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia. Mahayana, which includes the traditions of Pure Land, Zen, Nichiren Buddhism, Shingon and Tiantai, is found throughout East Asia. Rather than Nirvana, Mahayana instead aspires to Buddhahood via the Bodhisattva path, a state wherein one remains in the cycle of rebirth to help other beings reach awakening. Vajrayana, a body of teachings attributed to Indian Siddhas, may be viewed as a third branch of merely a part of Mahayana. Tibetan Buddhism, which preserves the Vajrayana teachings of 8th century India, is practiced in regions surrounding the Himalayas, Mongolia and Kalmykia. Tibetan Buddhism aspires to Buddhahood a rainbow body. Life of the Buddha Buddhism is an Indian religion attributed to the teachings of the Buddha, supposedly born Siddhartha Gautama, and also known as the Tathagatha and Sakyamuni. The details of Buddha's life are mentioned in many early Buddhist texts, but are inconsistent. His social background and life details are difficult to prove, the precise dates uncertain. The evidence of the early texts suggests that he was born as Siddhartha Gautama in Lumbini, and grew up in Kapilavastu, a town in the plains region of modern Nepal-India border and that he spent his life in what is now modern Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Some hagiographic legends state that his father was a king named Sudodana, his mother Queen Maya, and he was born in Lumbini Gardens. However, scholars such as Richard Gombrich consider this a dubious claim, because a combination of evidence suggests he was born in the Shakyas community one that later gave him the title Sheikh Yamuni, and the Sheikh community was governed by a small oligarchy or republic-like council where there were no ranks, but where seniority mattered instead. Some of the stories about Buddha, his life, his teachings, and claims about the society he grew up in may have been invented and interpolated at a later time into the Buddhist texts. According to the Buddhist sutras, Gautama was moved by the innate suffering of humanity and its endless repetition due to rebirth. He set out on a quest to end this repeated suffering. Early Buddhist canonical texts and early biographies of Gautama state that Gautama first studied under Vedic teachers, namely Alara Kalama and Adhaka Ramaputta, learning meditation and ancient philosophies. 
particularly the concept of nothingness, emptiness from the former, and what is neither seen nor unseen from the latter. Finding these teachings to be insufficient to attain his goal, he turned to the practice of asceticism. This too fell short of attaining his goal, and then he turned to the practice of jhana meditation, which he had already discovered in his youth. He famously sat in meditation under a ficus religiosa tree now called the Bodhi Tree in the town of Bodh Gaya in Gangetic Plains region of South Asia. He gained insight into the workings of karma and his former lives, and attained enlightenment, certainty about the middle way, as the right path of spiritual practice to end suffering from rebirths in samsara. As a fully enlightened Buddha, he attracted followers and founded a Sangha. Now, as the Buddha, he spent the rest of his life teaching the Dharma he had discovered, and passed away at the age of 80 in Kushinagar, India. Buddha's teachings were propagated by his followers, which in the last centuries of the first millennium BCE became over 18 Buddhist sub-schools of thought, each with its own basket of texts containing different interpretations and authentic teachings of the Buddha. These, over time, evolved into many traditions of which the more well-known and widespread in the modern era are Theravada, Mahayana and Vajrayana Buddhism. Four Noble Truths Dukkha and its Ending The Four Truths express the basic orientation of Buddhism, we crave and cling to impermanent states and things, which is Dukkha, incapable of satisfying and painful. This keeps us caught in samsara, the endless cycle of repeated rebirth, dukkha and dying again. But there is a way to liberation from this endless cycle to the state of nirvana, namely following the Noble Eightfold Path. The truth of dukkha is the basic insight that life in this mundane world with its clinging and craving to impermanent states and things is dukkha and unsatisfactory. Dukkha can be translated as, incapable of satisfying, the unsatisfactory nature, and the general insecurity of all conditioned phenomena, painful. Dukkha is most commonly translated as, suffering, which is an incorrect translation, since it refers not to literal suffering, but to the ultimately unsatisfactory nature of temporary states and things, including pleasant but temporary experiences. We expect happiness from states and things which are impermanent, and therefore cannot attain real happiness. In Buddhism, Dukkha is one of the three marks of existence, along with impermanence and anatta. Buddhism, like other major Indian religions, asserts that everything is impermanent, but, unlike them, also asserts that there is no permanent self or soul in living beings. The ignorance, or misperception that anything is permanent, or that there is self in any being is considered a wrong understanding. And the primary source of clinging and dukkha, dukkha arises when we crave and cling to these changing phenomena. The clinging and craving produces karma, which ties us to samsara, the round of death and rebirth. Craving includes karma tana, craving for sense pleasures. Bhavatana, craving to continue the cycle of life and death, including rebirth. And Vibhavatana, craving to not experience the world and painful feelings. Dukkha ceases, or can be confined, when craving and clinging cease or are confined. This also means that no more karma is being produced, and rebirth ends. Cessation is nirvana, blowing out, and peace of mind. By following the Buddhist path to moksha, liberation, one starts to disengage from craving and clinging to impermanent states and things. The term, path, is usually taken to mean the Noble Eightfold Path, but other versions of the path can also be found in the Nikayas. The Theravada tradition regards insight into the Four Truths as liberating in itself. 
Simsara. Simsara means wandering or world with the connotation of cyclic, circuitous change. It refers to the theory of rebirth and cyclicality of all life, matter, existence. A fundamental assumption of Buddhism, as with all major Indian religions, Simsara in Buddhism is considered to be dukkha, unsatisfactory and painful, perpetuated by desire and avidya, and the resulting karma. The theory of rebirths and realms in which these rebirths can occur is extensively developed in Buddhism, in particular Tibetan Buddhism with its Wheel of Existence doctrine. Liberation from this cycle of existence, nirvana, has been the foundation and the most important historical justification of Buddhism. The later Buddhist texts assert that rebirth can occur in six realms of existence, namely three good realms and three evil realms. Simsara ends if a person attains nirvana, the blowing out of the desires and the gaining of true insight into impermanence and non-self-reality. Rebirth Rebirth refers to a process whereby beings go through a succession of lifetimes as one of many possible forms of sentient life, each running from conception to death. In Buddhist thought, this rebirth does not involve any soul, because of its doctrine of anatta which rejects the concept of a permanent self, or an unchanging, eternal soul, as it is called in Hinduism and Christianity. According to Buddhism there ultimately is no such thing as a self in any being or any essence in anything. The Buddhist traditions have traditionally disagreed on what it is in a person that is reborn, as well as how quickly the rebirth occurs after each death. Some Buddhist traditions assert that no self doctrine means that there is no perduring self but there is avasya self which migrates from one life to another. The majority of Buddhist traditions, in contrast, assert that Vijnana, though evolving, exists as a continuum and is the mechanistic basis of what undergoes rebirth, rebecoming, and redeath. The rebirth depends on the merit or demerit gained by one's karma, as well as those accrued on one's behalf by a family member. Each rebirth takes place within one of five realms according to their avadans, or six according to other schools heavenly, demigods, humans, animals, hungry ghosts and hellish. In East Asian and Tibetan Buddhism, rebirth is not instantaneous, and there is an intermediate state between one life and the next. The orthodox their avada position rejects the weight and asserts that rebirth of a being is immediate. However, there are passages in the Samyata Nikaya of the Pali Canon that seem to lend support to the idea that the Buddha thought of an intermediate stage between one life and the next. Karma In Buddhism, karma drives samsara, the endless cycle of suffering and rebirth for each being good, skillful deeds and bad, unskillful deed produce seeds in the unconscious receptacle that mature later either in this life or in a subsequent rebirth. The existence of karma is a core belief in Buddhism, as with all major Indian religions. It implies neither fatalism nor that everything that happens to a person is caused by karma. A central aspect of Buddhist theory of karma is that intent matters and is essential to bring about a consequence of phala, fruit of vipaka, result. However, good or bad karma accumulates even if there is no physical action, and just having ill or good thoughts create karmic seeds, thus, actions of body, speech and mind all lead to karmic seeds. In the Buddhist traditions, life aspects affected by the law of karma in past and current births of a being include form of rebirth, realm of rebirth, social class, character, and major circumstances of a lifetime. It operates like the laws of physics, 
without external intervention, on every being in all six realms of existence including human beings and gods. A notable aspect of the karma theory in Buddhism is merit transfer. A person accumulates merit not only through intentions and ethical living, but also is able to gain merit from others by exchanging goods and services, such as through dana. Further, a person can transfer one's own good karma to living family members and ancestors. Liberation The cessation of the clashes and the attainment of nirvana, with which the cycle of rebirth ends, has been the primary and the soteriological goal of the Buddhist path for monastic life, since the time of the Buddha. The term, path, is usually taken to mean the Noble Eightfold Path, but other versions of the path, can also be found in the Nikayas. In some passages in the Pali Canon, a distinction is being made between right knowledge or insight, and right liberation or release, as the means to attain cessation and liberation. Nirvana literally means, blowing out, quenching, becoming extinguished. In early Buddhist texts, it is the state of restraint and self-control that leads to the blowing out and the ending of the cycles of sufferings associated with rebirths and redeaths. Many later Buddhist texts describe Nirvana as identical with Anatta with complete emptiness, nothingness. In some texts, the state is described with greater detail, such as passing through the gate of emptiness realizing that there is no soul or self in any living being, then passing through the gate of signlessness realizing that nirvana cannot be perceived, and finally passing through the gate of wishlessness realizing that nirvana is the state of not even wishing for nirvana. The nirvana state has been described in Buddhist texts partly in a manner similar to other Indian religions, as the state of complete liberation, enlightenment, highest happiness, bliss, fearlessness, freedom, permanence, non-dependent origination, unfathomable, indescribable. It has also been described in part differently, as a state of spiritual release marked by emptiness and realization of non-self. While Buddhism considers the liberation from samsara as the ultimate spiritual goal, in traditional practice, the primary focus of a vast majority of lay Buddhists has been to seek and accumulate merit through good deeds, donations to monks and various Buddhist rituals in order to gain better rebirths rather than nirvana. Refuge in the Three Jewels Traditionally, the first step in most Buddhist schools requires taking three refuges, also called the Three Jewels as the foundation of one's religious practice. Pali texts employ the Brahmanical motif of the Triple Refuge. Found in the Rigveda 9.97.47, Rigveda 6.46.9, and Chandogya Upanishad 2.22.34. Tibetan Buddhism sometimes adds a fourth refuge. In the Lama, the three refuges are believed by Buddhists to be protective and a form of reverence. The three jewels are, reciting the three refuges is considered in Buddhism not as a place to hide, rather a thought that purifies, uplifts and strengthens. Theravada Noble Eightfold Path An important guiding principle of Buddhist practice is the Middle Way. It was a part of Buddha's first sermon, where he presented the Noble Eightfold Path that was a middle way between the extremes of asceticism and hedonistic sense pleasures. In Buddhism, states Harvey, the doctrine of dependent arising to explain rebirth is viewed as the middle way between the doctrines that a being has a permanent soul involved in rebirth and death is final and there is no rebirth. In the Theravada canon, the Pali suttas, various often irreconcilable sequences can be found. 
According to Carol Anderson, the Beravada canon lacks an overriding and comprehensive structure of the path to Nibbana. Nevertheless, the Noble Eightfold Path, or Eightfold Path of the Noble Ones, has become an important description of the Buddhist path. It consists of a set of eight interconnected factors or conditions that, when developed together, lead to the cessation of dukkha. These eight factors are right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. This eightfold path is the fourth of the four noble truths and asserts the path to the cessation of dukkha. The path teaches that the way of the enlightened ones stops their craving, clinging, and karmic accumulations, and thus ended their endless cycles of rebirth and suffering. The Noble Eightfold Path is grouped into three basic divisions, as follows. Mahayana Bodhisattva Path and the Six Parameters Mahayana Buddhism is based principally upon the path of a bodhisattva. A bodhisattva refers to one who is on the path to Buddhahood. The term Mahayana was originally a synonym for Bodhisattvayana or Bodhisattva vehicle. In the earliest texts of Mahayana Buddhism, the path of a Bodhisattva was to awaken the Bodhisattva between 1st and 3rd century CE. This tradition introduced the Ten Boom Doctrine, which means ten levels or stages of awakening. This development was followed by the acceptance that it is impossible to achieve Buddhahood in one lifetime, and the best goal is not Nirvana for oneself, but Buddhahood after climbing through the ten levels during multiple rebirths. Mahayana scholars then outlined an elaborate path for monks and laypeople, and the path includes the vow to help teach Buddhist knowledge to other beings, so as to help them cross samsara and liberate themselves. Once one reaches the Buddhahood in a future rebirth, one part of this path of the paramita, derived from the Jataka's tales of Buddha's numerous rebirths. The Mahayana texts are inconsistent in their discussion of the paramitas, and some texts include lists of two, others four, six, ten and fifty-two. The six paramitas have been most studied and these are, in Mahayana sutras that include ten parameters, the additional four perfections are skillful means, vow, power and knowledge. The most discussed parameter, and the highest rated perfection in Mahayana texts is the prajna parameter, or the perfection of insight. This insight in the Mahayana tradition, states Shohei Ichimura, has been the insight of non-duality or the absence of reality in all things. Ela Buddhist Ethics Ela Asila is the concept of moral virtues, that is the second group, and an integral part of the Noble Eightfold Path. It consists of right speech, right action, and right livelihood. Ela appear as ethical precepts for both lay and ordained Buddhist devotees. It includes the five precepts for laypeople, eight or ten precepts for monastic life, as well as rules of Dharma adopted by a monastery. Vinaya Vinaya is the specific code of conduct for a Sangha of monks and nuns. It includes the Patamokha, a set of 227 offences including 75 rules of decorum for monks, along with penalties for transgression, in the Theravadan tradition. The precise content of the Vinaya Pitaka differs in different schools and tradition, and different monasteries set their own standards on its implementation. The list of Patamokha is recited every fortnight in a ritual gathering of all monks. Buddhist texts with Vinaya rules for monasteries have been traced in all Buddhist traditions, with the oldest surviving being the ancient Chinese translations. Monastic communities in the Buddhist tradition cut normal social ties to family and community, 
and Livas islands unto themselves. Within a monastic fraternity, a Sangha has its own rules. A monk abides by these institutionalized rules, and living a life as the Vinaya prescribes it is not merely a means, but very nearly the end in itself. Transgressions by a monk on Sangha Vinaya rules invites enforcement, which can include temporary or permanent expulsion. Samadhi, Jhana, Meditation A wide range of meditation practices has developed in the Buddhist traditions, but meditation primarily refers to the practice of Jhana C. Q. Jhana. It is a practice in which the attention of the mind is first narrowed to the focus on one specific object, such as the breath, a concrete object, or a specific thought, mental image or mantra. After this initial focusing of the mind, the focus is coupled to mindfulness, maintaining a calm mind while being aware of one's surroundings. The practice of dhyana aids in maintaining a calm mind, and avoiding disturbance of this calm mind, by mindfulness of disturbing thoughts and feelings. Origins The earliest evidence of yogis in the meditative tradition, states Carol Werner, is found in the Kesan hymn 10.136 of the Rig Veda. While evidence suggests meditation was practiced in the centuries preceding the Buddha, the meditative methodologies described in the Buddhist texts are some of the earliest among texts that have survived into the modern era. These methodologies likely incorporate what existed before the Buddha as well as those first developed within Buddhism. According to Bronckhorst, the Four Dhyanas was a Buddhist invention. Bronckhorst notes that the Buddhist canon has a mass of contradictory statements. Little is known about their relative chronology, and there can be no doubt that the canon including the older parts, the Sutra and Vinaya Pitaka was composed over a long period of time. Meditative practices were incorporated from other Sramanic movements. The Buddhist texts describe Buddha learnt the practice of the formless dhyana from Brahmanical practices, in the Nikayas ascribed to Alara Kalama and Adhaka Ramaputta. The Buddhist canon also describes and criticizes alternative jhana practices, which likely mean the pre-existing mainstream meditation practices of Jainism and Hinduism. Buddha added a new focus and interpretation, particularly through the four jhanas methodology, in which mindfulness is maintained. Further, the focus of meditation and the underlying theory of liberation guiding the meditation has been different in Buddhism. For example, states Bronckhorst, the verse 4.4.23 of the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, with its become calm, subdued, quiet, patiently enduring, concentrated, one sees soul in oneself, is most probably a meditative state. The Buddhist discussion of meditation is without the concept of soul, and the discussion criticizes both the ascetic meditation of Jainism and the real self soul meditation of Hinduism. Meditation and Insight The Buddhist tradition has incorporated two traditions regarding the use of jhana. There is a tradition that stresses attaining prajna as the means to awakening and liberation. But it has also incorporated the yogic tradition, as reflected in the use of jhana, which is rejected in other sutras as not resulting in the final result of liberation. Schmidhausen discerns three possible roads to liberation as described in the suttas, to which Vetter adds the sole practice of dhyana itself. According to Vetter and Bronckhorst, the earliest Buddhist path consisted of a set of practices which culminate in the practice of jhana, leading to a calm of mind which according to Vetter is the liberation which is being sought. Later on, liberating insight came to be regarded as equally liberating. 
this liberating insight came to be exemplified by prajna, or the insight in the four truths, but also by other elements of the Buddhist teachings. Prajna Insight Prajna Apana is insight a knowledge of the true nature of existence. The Buddhist tradition regards ignorance, a fundamental ignorance, misunderstanding, or misperception of the nature of reality, as one of the basic causes of dukkha and samsara. By overcoming ignorance in misunderstanding one is enlightened and liberated. This overcoming includes awakening to impermanence and non-self nature of reality. And this develops dispassion for the objects of clinging, and liberates a being from dukkha and samsara. Prajna is important in all Buddhist traditions, and is the wisdom about the dharmas, functioning of karma and rebirths, realms of samsara, impermanence of everything, no self in anyone or anything, and dependent origination. Vipassana in their Theravada Buddhism, but also in Tibetan Buddhism. Two types of meditation Buddhist practices are being followed, namely Samatha and Vipassana. Samatha is also called calming meditation, and was adopted into Buddhism. From pre-Buddha Indian traditions, Vipassana meditation was added by Buddha, and refers to Insight meditation. Vipassana does not aim at peace and tranquility, states Damien Keown, but the generation of penetrating and critical insight. The focus of Vipassana meditation is to continuously and thoroughly know impermanence of everything, no self in anything, and Dukkha teachings of Buddhism. Contemporary Theravada orthodoxy regards Samatha as a preparation for Vipassana pacifying the mind and strengthening the concentration in order to allow the work of insight, which leads to liberation. In contrast, the Vipassana movement argues that insight levels can be discerned without the need for developing Samatha further due to the risks of going out of course. When strong Samatha is developed, dependent arising pratati asamutpada, also called dependent arising, or dependent origination, is the Buddhist theory to explain the nature and relations of being, becoming, existence, and ultimate reality. Buddhism asserts that there is nothing independent, except the state of nirvana. All physical and mental states depend on and arise from other pre-existing states, and in turn, from them arise other dependent states while they cease. The dependent Karasings have a causal conditioning, and thus Pratati Asimutpada is the Buddhist belief that causality is the basis of ontology, not a creator god nor the ontological Vedic concept called universal self nor any other transcendent creative principle. However, the Buddhist thought does not understand causality in terms of Newtonian mechanics. Rather it understands it as conditioned arising. In Buddhism, dependent arising is referring to conditions created by a plurality of causes that necessarily co-originate a phenomenon within and across lifetimes, such as karma in one life creating conditions that lead to rebirth in one of realms of existence for another lifetime. Buddhism applies the dependent arising theory to explain origination of endless cycles of dukkha and rebirth through its twelve nidanas or twelve links doctrine. It states that, because a vidya exists samskaras exists, because samskaras exists therefore vijnana exists and in a similar manner it links Namarupa, Sadayatana, Spasa, Vedana, Tana, Upadana, Bhava, Jati, Haramarana. By breaking the circuitous links of twelve Nidanas, Buddhism asserts that a liberation from this endless cycles of rebirth and dukkha can be attained. Emptiness Anyata, or, emptiness, is a central concept in Nagarjuna's Madhyamaka school and widely attested in the Prajnaparamita Sutras. It brings together two key Buddhist doctrines, 
particularly in utter and dependent origination, to refute the metaphysics of Sarvastivada and Sotrantika. Not only sentient beings are empty of Atman, all phenomena are without any Svibhava, and thus without any underlying essence, and empty of being independent, thus the heterodox theories of Svabhava circulating at the time were refuted on the basis of the doctrines of early Buddhism. Mind only Sarvastivada teachings, which were criticized by Nagarjuna, were reformulated by scholars such as Vasubandhu and Asanga and were adapted into the Yogacara school, while the Madhyamaka school held that asserting the existence or non-existence of any ultimately real thing was inappropriate. Some exponents of Yogacara asserted that the mind and only the mind is ultimately real. Not all Yogacharans asserted that mind was truly existent. Vasubandhu and Asanga in particular did not. These two schools of thought, in opposition as synthesis, form the basis of subsequent Mahayana metaphysics in the Indo-Tibetan tradition. Buddha nature Buddha nature is a concept found in some first millennium CE Buddhist texts, such as the Tathagatagarbha Sutras. This concept has been controversial in Buddhism, but has a following in the East Asian Buddhism. These sutras suggest, states Paul Williams, that all sentient beings contain the Tathagata as their essence, core inner nature, self. The Tathagatagarbha doctrine, at its earliest probably appeared about the later part of the 3rd century CE, and it contradicts the Anatta doctrine in a vast majority of Buddhist texts, leading scholars to posit that the Tathagatagarbha sutras were written to promote Buddhism to non-Buddhists. However, the Buddhist text Ratnagatravabhaga states that the self implied in Tathagatagarbha doctrine is actually not self. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.